Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. You know, sometimes it just gets to a point in your life where you just have to say, I give up. That's it. I'm giving up. Not like you're raising the white flag, but you're just pressing the pause button, essentially surrendering in many different ways to the universe, to yourself. So impactful. It can be a game changer in moving your life forward and realizing things that because you were so busy, you didn't see. We're going to learn about that, techniques to surrender, and so much more from an amazing coach that helps people move their lives forward all the time, especially those who are burned out. There's another reason to surrender. She is Michelle Meta, and she joins us today. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? Good, Steve. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on today. It's a pleasure. So great to have you back here. And this is truly something I feel that we we need to talk about because we're running these busy, crazy lives. We don't take any real time for ourselves. We don't even take time to to think. It's and it's it's just working against us. Many of us I, I think come from generations where it's like, keep working, keep working, keep working. But what is that gonna do? That's gonna that's gonna lead to burnout and other challenges, right? Absolutely. When we say surrender, I feel some people may think just just what we're talking about here, like the white flag, like I'm giving up. But it's really not not about that, right? It is not. It's not about giving up. It's actually just the ebb and the flow. How would you describe surrendering? You know when we make a fist and our nails are digging into our palm, and then all of a sudden you let go, that's surrendering. Mm. It's about loosening the grip that we're holding on to. Because when we're focusing on that, we are forgetting about the other opportunities that are around us. And it comes in many different shapes and forms when you say the word surrender. It could be just surrendering to spirituality, surrendering to the universe. Like, all right, I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to tie religion into it, but you know, some people say there was a song that came out um, about like 15 years ago. So, uh, Jesus, take the wheel. You know, just like I'm, I'm you know, you, you drive now, or whatever drives the universe, or whatever it might be, because you've gotten to a point where you're just really not moving forward. You're kind of stuck or, or frustrated, or you've got lots of anxiety from the way life is. Um, not easy to surrender, though. That's the challenge. How do we do that? Yeah, number one, I think personally for me is it is really hard for me to surrender, you know, because when we're so goal-oriented, we want it so bad, then there's a thing called divine timing and just trusting it, right? Trusting where we are, trusting where our process. And so having that ability to just take a deep breath, like we talked about life breath last episode, Mm -hmm. is really just taking that deep breath, a deep belly breath, and just telling yourself, you're okay, and you are perfectly where you need to be. Because sometimes we're focusing on something that may not even be part of our card. I'm a firm believer in that, and I always say, and I've seen the research, and it always comes back to the same thing, that roughly 90% of the things that we worry about worry about never take place, never transpire. Like we're literally wasting our energy on these things that we could we could put that into, you know, other areas. Um, and sometimes at that point you just gotta surrender. Yes, loosen the grip. I wanna share with you my surrendering lately, because mm. I think it will make sense for, for a lot of us. And that is on the weekend, I would text with friends and I'm like, well, what are you up to? Ah, oh, they would say, I'm I'm just laying in bed, just doing nothing. Just laying in bed. I'm like, but wait a minute. It's the weekend. You could be doing something. You could be, there's so much you could be doing and you're just laying around doing nothing. Yep. And I had trouble processing that for a while. And then I I finally got it. It finally clicked. And now I take at least one of the weekend days and I'll stay in bed later. Sometimes I'll treat myself to breakfast delivered. I'll get a nice cup of coffee, sit in bed with the TV on, just chill out, maybe take it up to like, you know, nine, 10 o'clock, whatever it might be. And this was my surrender moment. I finally realized that when I'm doing that, my brain had been saying, you're doing nothing. You're not being productive. But I've realized that I am being productive. I'm recharging my body. I'm recharging my mind. I'm taking time to think and just be present. But I never Got it, Michelle. I never, and I'm talking, this is like three, four months ago, I finally started doing this. That's my surrender. You know why that happens, right, Steve? You know why that happens, right? Tell me. 
because we're so caught up in the doing and the action. And we've been told since we were little kids, don't stay in bed too late. You know, you're, you're being called lazy. And, yes. you know, we're labeled all the different things, not realizing that our body needs to just stop and pause for a second. And that boredom is actually healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I now look forward to it. And now I view it as being basically therapeutic when, when, I'm, when I'm doing that. Yeah, because we're so programmed to be on yep. and chase the next thing. Once you reach Mount Everest, it's like, well, now what? No, you got to go find another Mount Everest. And so now you're back on that climb again versus just staying where you are and just celebrating in a state of gratitude Mm -hmm. of what you've accomplished and the journey. Because sometimes it's just, we don't even celebrate the journey that we're on. You know, it's like, oh, it happens to everybody. Everybody gets to be on a podcast. You know, there's, you know, millions of people are doing podcasts now. We all get to do it. But in reality, it's like, but who are those million people? You're maybe one in your only family or one in your only friend circle doing something like this. Yep. But we compare it to, oh, well, everybody shows up on television. Yeah, but who are you in that process? Everybody's unique. Everybody's individual. Everybody's got different things they deal with. And how do you, how do we just surrender? It's not easy. It wasn't easy for me. You know, suggestions, what, what works what could work for us? I think taking that time, like one of my best friends always tells me, Michelle, when are you going to go down to the beach? I live in Southern California. Mm-hmm. There's 20 beaches in an access of the same time difference, right? Travel distance. She's like, when are you going to take yourself to the beach and just sit on the sand and just wash the waves? And I think that's like, okay, I could do that. But then it's so boring, right? I'd rather do it with somebody else. But in her mind, she's like, you need to do it for yourself and just recharge for yourself. Yep. And when you're alone, that's when you get to really fall in love with yourself at a mind, body, soul level. And you really get to trust yourself who you are. Because growing up, we may trust ourselves from the beginning or we may have trust issues. And when we don't even trust ourselves, we don't even feel safe within ourselves. Yep. Yeah. And that's when we're chasing the next thing and the lack of confidence kicks in. Is, so, you know, I'm, I'm glad you're bringing this up because many of us don't sit with ourselves Best, right. best description I can give to it. But how do I phrase this? I've never heard somebody say what you just said. If we have trust issues, does that also connect to ourselves? Like we, we don't hang out with ourselves. We don't take the time to sit with ourselves because we also don't trust ourselves. Could that even be possible? That is possible because that's a phrase, right? Know thyself. Hmm. And sometimes we're seeking who we are from other people. We're seeking validation. I'm only good enough if you tell me I'm good enough. But I don't think I'm good enough. And we're looking for that like validation from our parents, from our siblings, from our best friends, from our coworkers, from our managers, employers. Right? There's all these different types of people, roles that people play in our lives. And we're like, you know, if they tell me that they're proud of me, then only then I'm doing something right. Right. Versus taking the rein in our own hands and saying, you know what? I'm freaking damn proud of myself for doing this today. Right? And celebrating how far you personally have come. Because at the end of the day, you are the sole person that's making the decision. You're choosing yes or no in that moment. They're providing you the options, but you're the one that's the end deciding factor. So how solid are you when making that decision? Well, it's a great point you bring up because how many of us look in the mirror and say, hey, you're a good person. Yeah, you, you, you look pretty good. You're, you got it going on. You've got uh, your life relatively uh, together. We, we don't do that. We, we look nope. at the negative, pick out the flaws. Right, exactly. Why are your eyes like that? Oh my God, I'm getting wrinkles now. I must be getting old. Oh, I have another gray hair. Oh, now I have a stomach that used to be a six pack. Oh, I'm so horrible. Like that's what we do. And again, you know, I am statements shape our reality. So what, when you look in the when you look in the mirror, what are you looking at? The the we tell ourselves lies all the time, and unfortunately, our subconscious doesn't believe the difference between fact or fiction. So it's just good. whatever you give it, it's going to take it, and it's going to turn it into a reality. Exactly, and most of us realize like when you ask a question, what is it that you do not like? What is it that you want? What is it that you really want? They're going to give you a list of all the things that they do not want. Our and then what does the universe do? It gives you everything that you do not want because it does not know the difference between right. do not and do. Are there affirmations, language, certain things that we can say 
to get us, yeah, you know, we're talking about surrendering today, but to get us closer to yeah. that, that surrender point? Yeah, say something like, I am blessed. I am blessed to go check the mail today. I am blessed to pay that credit card statement. I am blessed to have funds in my bank account, right? Appreciating what's in front of you. The things that you don't like to do, instead of saying, I have to do this or I need to do this, change it with, I get to do this and I'm blessed to do this. I love the way you. I love the way you focus that, Michelle. Because so many of us, like, I gotta pay a bill. I I have to go to work. I have to this. I have to that. No, you get to be thankful. You, you get to. You have money to pay bills that um, support you. You know that you have internet and you have a cell phone and you have electricity. Be thankful. Imagine if you didn't have to pay bills. Oh, wow, wouldn't that be great? Well, that would mean that you didn't have money. Well, that would mean you wouldn't have those services. Well, that would mean you wouldn't have those things that you enjoy in your life. Exactly. I am blessed to be lazy today because it is my bo- it's my time for my body to recharge, to give me the energy that I need for a really busy week ahead. Mm. Right? A lot of introverts get called being lazy. A lot of teenagers who are creative, they love culinary, and they love drawing and painting, and they're songwriters and lyricists. They get labeled for being lazy by their parents. But what they're doing is they're allowing their unconscious mind to expand and create so that when they really want to do the things that they love to do, it comes to them naturally. It is an age-old thing where your teen is just hanging out in their room and you're just thinking, they're just lazy. Well, maybe they're not. They're being creative. They're recharging their mind. Maybe they're at school all day and they're yeah, that they're kind of burned out in that one way and now they're taking that time to uh, yeah, use their mind. <laughs> just think for a while. Absolutely. And just because they're laying in bed, we automatically think they're lazy. Right. But they could be dreaming. They could be thinking. You know, sometimes one of my favorite things to do is when I have to give a presentation in front of 20 people or 200 people or, you know, whatever size, in front of an audience, I take a nap and I design my entire script from start to finish and I dream about it. I got my opening line and I, and I wake up and I'm ready to go. Yep. And my parents are like thinking, oh my gosh, she's so lazy. She just took a four hour nap. But in my mind, I got the entire scenario planned out. So when I show up on that, when I take that microphone, I'm on that stage, information just flows right out of me. Yep. Yeah, it's almost as if you were there. You visualized it, you planned it out in your mind along the way. So it's not a surprise, it's not a shock, you're just kind of executing it. Exactly. Hmm. When was the last time that that you surrendered? Anything come to mind for you? I surrendered over the weekend, Memorial Day weekend. All I did was just lay in bed and watch movies that I never get to watch. Never had the time to watch, never made it a priority, but I just sat in front of the television and just camped out of there. And it was so fun just to not mm. think about anything related to work or business, you know, or the week ahead. And just really sat down with myself and was like, you know, I'm just going to enjoy the movie because this is my time to just be free. I don't watch TV because I get bored. And I wish that wasn't the case. Usually, I'll, if I watch, somebody else is with me watching, and I'll, I'll set the intention. I'll lay down on the couch. You know what? I don't have anything going. It's rare, but I'm like, I don't have anything going on this evening or, or later in the evening. I'm going to put on the TV. I'm going to find something. And I don't. I find myself getting on my phone, making a phone call. Um, I just can't watch TV, but I need to. I, I need to surrender to my TV. I never thought I'd ever say that. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I don't, I, I don't have a TV in my bedroom at all. Um, we have, like, multiple TVs in our house. Sure. However, like, I would never be the one, like, every evening where I need to watch something. It's just, if I do to forcefully surrender stuff away from my phone, that's the only time the TV comes on. Because we're in front of our computers and on Zoom all day long that I don't need to watch other people do it because I'm the one that's making all the actions happen, mm-hmm. right? I'm seeing myself in the mirror. I'm seeing my friends in the mirror. Like, we're, we're on screen throughout the week. And so for me, for the television, is just for me to forcefully just be like, I'm just going to surrender to the content in front of me. And that's it. Now, surrender comes... someone calls me, then I don't even answer. <laughs> right. Well, good for you. And, and, and I just had this conversation yesterday and uh, they're called standards. That's what that that's what people tell me these are called. The standards you said. And right. one one of them is when I'm taking time for myself, I'm not answering the phone. And it happened where and it was like a month ago and I had a 
some time in between the end of the day and a meeting in the evening. And there's an airport, local little airport here. So I drove to the airport because it's quiet and it's a big field. And, you know, seeing a plane take off land, it'd be cool too. Don't have to. Brought some food with me, sitting there. And I'm like, nice breeze coming through. It's sunny. Then the phone rings and it's somebody with a challenge. Then the phone rings and somebody just wants a dump. I'm, I'm empathetic. I admit it. And now I'm like answering the phone, now taking away from me. So that's my standard. I'm not answering the phone. I'm not going to do it anymore. Not, not when I'm in that zone. Um, I wanted to talk about surrendering in a different way. You, yeah. you help people through coaching, but you, you in a, call it in another life, you were part of corporate America. You got burned out. You surrendered at that point to move on to a different uh, aspect of your life. So that I guess that's another way of surrendering. That is. I decided after my third layoff at the age of 30, um, I decided, you know what, I don't want to go back to corporate because things happened to me in threes. This is my third layoff at the age of 30. At the time when you know, I was just reestablishing myself in corporate America, it was supposed to be the foundation of my career, but it didn't do me well. Especially because the day that I got laid off, I was actually hired for a brand new position in the same company. And then by the end of the day, I was terminated. So this is like unheard of in corporate America, but it happened to me. And that's where I said, you know what, I need to make a change. And at the same time, my coaching certification was ending. So I said, you know what, I have the certification. Might as well build a coaching business around it, not knowing a clue what I was doing. And so that position ended and I hired a business coach. And that was for me to surrender the idea of I'm not going to have a normal lifestyle like my friends who are excelling in corporate America, have the benefits, have the, you know, the paycheck, a consistent paycheck coming in here. I am going to be doing everything on my own. Did you ever in your wildest dreams when you left corporate America for that last time, did you ever think that you would be a best-selling author, TEDx speaker, certified life coach, um, helping people with their lives. Would you ever even think that back then? Absolutely not. Hmm. Absolutely not. There was no way on when I remember going back, November 1st, 2018, I said, okay, I'm now a certified coach. What the heck do I do? And I had no idea that coaching is related to my core value of how I value myself and my services that I was offering. And coming out of that position of not having a job that everybody thought I should have, you know, around that age was failing. And then to make that decision to be like, now I'm going to do everything on my own. And it took so many convincing hours for my friends and family, extended friends, extended family to appreciate what I was creating. And so some of these accolades that I got was for them to help me realize who I am and for me to realize what I'm worth. And it helped me get over the imposter syndrome that was being created as a result of it. That surrendering was pretty major because you surrendered with nothing. You know I what did. I'm, right? Yes. Hmm. It had to be scary. It had to be. It was completely, I mean, it was the biggest investment I'd made in my entire life. It was $10,000 for that business coach who had like 20 years of experience. And I thought, you know what? I want the best and I'm going to do that. And it was also the first time I went into a credit card debt that I'd never had before. And here I was, like, you know, investing in myself with the best coaches, with the best community to help me realize what I'm capable of. Because sometimes we don't even know what, our capa- what our, we are capable of. We don't even know our own capabilities until somebody handholds you, shows you the blind spots, and says, you can overcome these. Let me help you. Thank you for sharing that because many of us never talk about that in terms of, uh, I surrender too. Now that I'm thinking about it years ago, yeah. 26 years, my, it was the second job I ever had. Um, I was, I got it when I was barely 18, big radio station, New York area. I was there for 26 years and wow. It just didn't feel right anymore. They were making changes. They were going in a direction to be kind of like rude and crude. That's not me. It just didn't support my my values. And they offered, you know, uh, hey, go to another state. We have another station here. And it just it all didn't make sense. So I woke up on a on a Monday, 
And after all those years, I said to myself, Wednesday's your last day. And I went in and said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving on Wednesday. And I surrendered. I didn't have a job. <laughs> I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a small son, just a few months old. And uh, that was it. Yeah, it's, I just made a renovation on my house and I had nothing. I accept some severance to figure it out. And I, I surrendered and uh, I don't, I think it was a great idea. I think I did the right thing. I truly feel I did. But it was like you did, same thing. It was the ultimate in surrender where there's nothing else there. You don't have a fallback at that moment. Um, and it's almost just like, all right, universe, what are we doing now? I trust you and you got to trust yourself. By the way, at that time, I really didn't trust myself. I do now, but I didn't then. But that was part of the journey. Absolutely, and that's what we have to focus on, right? How much do we trust ourselves? You know, what are, your, what are you naturally doing that you know you can trust? You know you can turn. You trust yourself in making that turn. You mm-hmm. can trust yourself in getting to your destination, yep. right? Whether you're bi- on a bicycle, you're walking, yep. you're driving. So it's like how you do one thing is how you do everything. So already know that you can trust yourself. You have the ability. You ability to wake up when the alarm rings. You have the ability to hit the snooze button if you want to. Well, we all are responsible creatures. We're all responsible people. And if you know that, then trust comes easily to you. Yeah. Um, that was part of my journey, trusting myself. And now the number one phrase or mantra that I pilot by is, all I need is within me now. I love that. And I say it all the time. I shared it last night with some people. And if, if you're going to say it, you can say it seven different ways to impact where it's like, all I need is within me now. All I need is within me now. All I need is within me now. Um, it's, it's made a difference in my life because subconsciously I feel like I, I can, I can rely on myself where previously, eh, I don't know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. And mm-hmm. you know, life, life tests us all the time. So I want, uh, we're just about out of time. I want you to tell everybody how they can connect with you on a coaching level, even just to start the conversation, even if somebody's just burned out from their job, maybe they're thinking about surrendering and a little worried about what could come next. How do they find you? They can find me on um, social media, which is Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. And it's at I am Michelle Mehta. That's I-A-M-M-I-C-H. E L L E M E H T A. And you will be able to connect with me there. Shoot me a direct message, private message. And you can also visit my website at michellemeta.com. You have a great website, and uh, details on your books are there, and, and you have a great blog as well. Uh, always f- love talking with you, Michelle. Really do. Me too. I enjoy our conversation too. Thank you so much, Steve, for a wonderful conversation. Oh, well, thank you. And thank, thank you for helping us realize things in ourselves and that it's okay to surrender. (laughs) It really is. Absolutely. Loosen the grip. We'll catch up next time. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the podcast business news network. It's Thursday night and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Started off with a pitcher for the table which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.